So what we're going to do is now pack it with our leveler. No. You do not use a level to compact anything. The one job of a level is to be a level. This reaction video sponsored by Nationwide Industries, but Nationwide Industries is more than just a sponsor. I legitimately enjoy doing business with them, both with the Cornerstone 2 hinges and the Trident latch that we use on our pool gates or on their full line of chain link hardware. They're great people to work with. I appreciate them a lot. If you're looking for a supplier, you should check them out too. All right, guys, today's video is titled How to Set Up a Fence Post Without Concrete. Interesting uh, proposition. In the fencing community, a big conversation is how to set with concrete, whether it's dry pack or a uh, wet set. But this, uh, this video is going to try to convince us not to use concrete at all. Should be interesting. If you'd like to watch the video in its entirety without my commentary, we'll link that video in the description below. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to put a post in the ground with no concrete. That's right, no concrete. What happens with concrete and timber water can't escape. The water gets seeps inside the concrete and rottens the post. Now you go to hardware stores and they say, oh yeah, paint the post before you, you put the concrete in. That's wrong. I hesitate to say what what is right or wrong because there's always more than one way to complete a task sort of thing. I would mention a product, they're not a sponsor, or I'd don't financially gain from this, but it's called the post saver. It's a sleeve uh, that's got bitumen on the inside. You would heat it, it shrinks up to the post, and it actually does provide a barrier between whatever's outside the post to whatever's inside the post. I don't know. I don't, we'll see where the video goes. And these are the tools you're gonna be needing. You need a shovel, some vices, a hammer, and this in particular, this is called a pinch bar. It's a very, very good tool. As you should see it's wide here. You can get a thinner one. Depends on your hardware store. We would actually call that a root bar because we use those to cut roots quite often. And you also, you would need a leveler. So when the post goes up, we need to level the posts. I like the fact that he's using a longer level rather than like a short torpedo level. Uh, it lets him check plumb of the entire post or the average of the entire post uh, rather than just a small section of that post. It gives a more accurate idea of where plumb actually is for that whole entire post. The hole we'd be doing is around about the size of the blade, which is around about, you don't want to be doing any, any bigger than this. This is around about, 200 millimeters to 20 centimeters. If you're looking at inches, you're looking around about eight inches. So we're gonna be doing eight inches by eight inches. So it looks like that's a four by four post. So he's using an eight by eight hole. It'd probably be a minimum hole size I'd want. It's really gonna depend on wind load, how tall the fence is gonna be, that sort of thing. A better rule of thumb is three times the diameter of the post in hole hole diameter. Hole should be, maximum should be at 550 millimeters, which would be 55 centimeters or inches, 21 and a half inches. Obviously where this gentleman's at, the frost line is very different. Here in the United States, we'd want to see a minimum of 30 inches just to meet ASTM standards. Uh, but also you'd want to check with your local area for as far as frost depth goes, meaning that, so we're in Greene County, Missouri. I would Google Greene County Mo frost depth. And it's usually a uh, Department of Agriculture uh, site that will have either a, a, some sort of reference as to what the frost depth in your county is. You would want to stay four or six inches below that to keep the post from frost heaving. All right, so once you find your uh, desired points where you want to put the, the hole, could be for a veranda, could be for a fence. Then, as I said, 200 mils this way, 200 mils that way, 200 mils this way, also that way. So once you get your, your 200 mils, push the dirt away and continue doing, continue digging like this, 200. Move it out of the way. Keep, keep doing it, digging. As you can see, it's coming up as a square box. And you can see it's the same size as the shovel. But you don't want to go any more than that because then it'll be too, too big. So what we do is now we start digging, moving the, the soil. The soil here, you're going to need it later on to put it back. And you want good soil, you don't want clay. So we keep digging. Once you've done your square, your 200 by 200 by 200, then you grab your pinch bark and you hit the edges. See, you make a line where your shovel has just been. And this is where the pinch bar is very good. Keep digging like this. That soil looks really nice to dig in from someone that's used to digging through uh, a, a variety of chunk rock and solid rock. Looks like pretty good dirt. See, as I've taken out the dirt, we have the clay. 
section and then on the right here we have the the nice dirt section the dirt section is what we're going to put first back in the hole with a bit of cement and because the clay is um, you can't put it back because it's very hard to compact this is what we're going to put back into the hole once we've dug our, our 550 uh, millimeters hole let's talk about rot for a second so he's saying that by setting a post in concrete you would actually encourage rot in the post but by setting it with dirt specifically he's talking about the clay soil uh, it would actually prevent rot. I don't tend to agree with this line of thought. Clay soils will actually retain moisture. Clay retains moisture rather than draining it. So what he would be doing would be holding moisture closer to that post for longer. Also, we need to have an understanding of like what rot and decay is a result of and is typically ground contact with the post in the aerobic zone uh, the first several inches down of the topsoil. Microbes are alive. They're feeding on the natural you know fiber and the pulp of the wood and leading to rot and decay so inadvertently by just using dirt only not creating a barrier between the post and the dirt whether it's through concrete or through the post saver type product i would think that you would be increasing the likelihood of rot and decay especially as the clay soil is holding moisture to the wood and get it, giving these organisms more access to the fiber and pulp of that wood post so now uh, we dug the hole, we're going to put the posts in, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Once we put the post in the center of the hole, 200 by 200, and, it, and the depth is 21 and a half inch in this case, as I said, if, if it soils, um, uh, it's not as uh, clay, you need to go deeper. So in this case, we've put braces here. I don't know that the bracing in this step would be entirely necessary, especially in such a shallow hole. You could generally plumb it as you compact the soil around the post and then readjust the post to remain in plumb. Usually when we see bracing like this, it's uh, when pouring a significant amount of concrete that may not cure quickly and we want to keep that post in plumb. If we're, if we're compacting either concrete or soil around the post in real time, bracing is probably not necessary. And now we're going to proceed to put the dirt and a bit of cement. You don't have to use cement, but we're going to, I'm going to show you how to put the dirt back in the hole. No concrete. Please do not use concrete. As I said before, the, the concrete destroys the timber. I think it also probably is going to depend on the treatment of the post. I mean, there's a very good chance that that post he's setting is treated very differently than the treated post that we have here in the United States, whether it's, it's ACQ or MCQ or whatever treatment we have in the States. He's likely dealing with a different treatment. So I don't know. It could be that the acidity and concrete does affect those posts differently just a thought trust me this is the best way to do it doesn't rot and it lasts at least 30 years at least 30 years i i have a hard time i have a hard time believing it's a 30-year post it's easy to say how long it would last before it's actually been done but i i don't know let me know in the comments below whether you think this might be a 30-year post or not a couple shovels not too much in and we put put it on each side and it's even so we do like that. Now what we can do is only put a little bit in at a time because we don't want to move the post. So what we're going to do is now pack it with our leveler. No. You do not use a level to compact anything. The one job of a level is to be a level. You don't use it to pack. You don't use it to bend. You don't use it to force anything. That level is only to be used as a level. The danger is that it comes out of level. It comes out of square and true. He has... He has a tool with him right now that he's been using. The opposite end of that root cutter uh, is a is a flat end that he could use to compact it. In no way, absolutely no way, would you want to use a level to do anything like this. To start off with, we go all the way around. We'd be careful not to move the post. And then what we're going to do later is we're going to check the level. So each time you do this, you have to check the level in case it moves. And you keep going until it's hard and firm. As I said, once you finish all this process, the post won't even move, guys, and it's fantastic. Get a little bit of cement if you want, or you can mix this in with the dirt. Just sprinkle a little bit like that. A bit of cement. It's not concrete, it's cement. Tiny bit. No, you don't need much. I'm not sure I understand the point of layering um, cement with the dirt. Maybe, it, maybe the thought is it provides some rigidity there. 
And what we're going to do now, at the end of that pinch bar, there's a, there is a little top that you have. And this is, this is for this purpose, is to pack it. So we just go gently. Then why use the level? I've seen enough guys ruin good levels doing silly things like this. Why not use the tool that is created for it? And that's, I don't know. I've bought enough levels that this is kind of a, it might be a bit of a sore spot for me, but you would not you want to use an expensive level to do any sort of tamping when you have a tool that's made for this exact thing. Now we just finish the hole. We follow the process, putting in three shovels and a little bit of cement if you want in the hole. Now, as you notice, I didn't put no water. Please do not put water as you're doing this. It has to be dry and just keep packing it. And each time you keep packing it, you have to keep, every time you, before you put a shovel in, make sure you use your level. Because once you finish and it's not leveled, you're gonna have to start all over again because you won't be able to pull it or move it. So please ensure each time that you pack it and once you finish packing, you put some more dirt in, always use the level. All right guys, so this is the end of the video. As you can see, the post has been put in, it's nice and leveled. You cannot move it, it's extremely, extremely strong as if there was concrete in the dirt, extremely strong. And the good thing about it is as it rains and the water goes into the dirt, you know that the water, as it gets sunny again, the water's gonna evaporate. So it's gonna keep your post dry. The other option is that the soil gets wet, the weight of the post moves the fence line so the fence line's no longer square with itself. Um, and then when it dries, it dries it back in that crooked position. Well guys, let me know in the comments below what you think of uh, this post setting technique that uh, does not utilize concrete. For now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.